الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد إذا مرض العبد بعث الله إليه ملكين when a servant becomes ill Allah سبحانه وتعالى sends two angels فقال انظر ما يقول لأواده Allah سبحانه وتعالى tells the angels that go and inspect my servants and see what he says to the people who are visiting him. فَإِنْ هُوَ إِذَا جَاءُوهُ حَمِدَ اللَّهُ وَأَثْنَ عَلَيْهِ رَفَعَ ذَلِكَ إِلَى اللَّهُ They inspect the servant and they see that no matter what difficulty, what hardship, what turmoil, what sickness he is going under and he is going through, he is saying Alhamdulillah in all conditions. Good is from Allah, bad is from Allah. All conditions are from Allah. So Allah SWT replies when he hears the Farishta saying that my servant has done this. فَيَقُودُ لِعَبْدِي أَلَيَّ أَنْ أُدْخِلَهُ الْجَنَّةِ It's my responsibility now to make sure that he becomes one of the inmates of Jannah. And if I give him Shifa, I will convert his flesh into flesh better than that. وَأَنْ أُكَفِّرَ عَنْهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِ And he will return from that sickness where his sins are and have been forgiven. So no matter what condition a person is under and what difficulties they are going through, our heart should always be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالْقَدْرِ The destiny, the good and bad is min Allah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amongst the amal yaqini which a person a person of Iman, a person of Akhirat resorts to when conditions, difficulties, hardships and sicknesses comes to him is to be generous and to spend in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's path. As-sakhawatu shajaratun asluha fil jannah Generosity is a tree which its roots are connected to jannah and the branches are branched out into the dunya. فَمَنْ تَعَلَّكَ بِغُسْنٍ مِنْهَا مَدَّهُ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Whoever holds steadfast onto this branch of generosity as if he is getting support and assistance to Jannah. And stinginess has a tree which its roots are connected to Jahannam. وَخْسَانُهَا And its branches are hanging out on the dunya. فَمَنْ تَعَلَّكَ بِغُسْنٍ مِنْهَا مَدَّهُ إِلَى النَّارِ and whoever holds onto this branch of miserliness and stinginess as if he is being directed towards Jahannam. So that's a sign. Nabi Ali Salam has explained about generosity and stinginess. Al Bakhilu Ba'idum min Allah. A stingy person is far from Allah. Ba'idum min al Jannah is distance from Jannah. Ba'idum min al Nas is distance from people. People don't like him as well. Qareebum min al Nar and close to Jahannam. How balig, how eloquent Nabi Ali Salam has put it. Now fortunate are the people who can understand and comprehend the language of Jannah, the language of Jannah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the language of Allah. وَالسَّخِي قَرِيبٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ A generous person is close to Allah. قَرِيبٌ مِّنَ الْجَنَّةِ is close to Jannah. قَرِيبٌ مِّنَ النَّاسِ And people love him and he's close to people. بَعِيدٌ مِّنَ النَّارِ And his distance is far away from Jahannam. So when a person is generous and he doesn't mind people who are in need, so Nabi Alayhi Wasallam has encouraged us, إِذَا سَأَلَ سَعِلٌ فَلَا تَقْتَعُوا عَلَيْهِ مَسْأَلَتَهُ When somebody comes and asks you, don't be rude, don't be abrupt, don't chase them away. You have no idea. But if you have to disperse them, وَلَوْ بِشَيْقِ تَمْرَ Even if you have a piece of kajur, you got one cent in your pocket, don't leave them empty-handed, give them something. I know one person who travels in his car with certain snacks that anybody that asks him is he's distributing it and disembursing it. So make an amal on the hadith. So if you even have nothing, at least give them some kind words or console them. But Nabi Ali Salaam warned us worse than that فَإِنَّهُ قَدْ يَأْتِيكُمْ مَا لَيْسَ بِإِنْسٍ وَلَا جَانٍ Sometimes it is possible that beggar that's coming to you may not be a human being or a jinn. يَنْذُرُونَ كَيْفَ 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see now this person that has been sent is not an insan or a jinnat, but they have been sent to test you to see how you treat the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why our tongue should be very sweet in that situation. مَا مِنْ رَجُلٍ يَتَسَدَّقُوا فِي يَوْمٍ أَوْ لَيْلَةٍ إِلَّا حَفِظَ مِنْ أَيَّ مُوتْ That through the sadaqah and this generosity, whether it's day or night, a person is protected from a lot of things. مِنْ لَدْغَةٍ أَوْ هَدْمَةٍ أَوْ مَوْتِ فَغْتَهِ Sudden death, being crushed, being bitten, thus sadaqah protects us from a lot of balas and calamities and it is highly encouraged. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma when explaining ithnan min shaytan wa ithnan min Allah. Two qualities are from Allah and two are from shaytan iblis. Al-shaytan ya'idikum al-faqr. Shaytan promise you poverty that if you're going to be generous what's going to happen? Worry about yourself, worry about your family and wa ya'amukum bil fahsha and he encourages immodesty. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised maghfirah and fadla. Allah promised His forgiveness that a person who obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of error, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ready to forgive him. And a person who is generous, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be generous on that person as well. That's why it said that it has been Written on the door of Jannah, three lines. Awwaluha, la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, first line. Second, ummatun mudniba wa rabbun ghafur. That a ummah that is sinful, but a creator, a rabb that is forgiven. A ummah that is sinful, but a rabb that is forgiven. Wa thalith, wajadna ma amilna rabihna. And the third line, we have found what we practiced on the benefits. Whatever good you do, you will see it. مَا قَدَّمْنَا خَسِرْنَا مَا خَلَفْنَا That whatever we have sent forward, we have found it. And whatever we kept with us, means when a person passes away and whatever wealth, he has lost it. So the ulama the Mashaykh have explained that every action has a reaction. But the actions of deen have a reaction in dunya and akhirat. Man mana khamsan, man Allah minu khamsan. Whoever stops five things will be deprived of five. Man mana zakat, man Allah min hibz al mal. Whoever prevents zakat, then his wealth will not be protected. Man mana al sadaqa, and whoever prevents sadaqa, they will be deprived of afia. And whoever does not give usher the tax that has been laid on land and agriculture, then they will not get the barakah of that land. وَمَنْ مَنَعَ الدُّعَى And whoever stops giving, making dua to Allah, مَنَعَ اللَّهُ مِنْهُ الْإِجَابَةِ Eventually his questions, his crying to Allah will no more be accepted. مَنْ تَهَاوَنَ بِالصَّلَاةِ and whoever takes salat lightly and does not perform the five faraid salat at a stipulated time, mana'a Allahu minhu عند الموت Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deprive him of saying la ilaha illallah at the time of death. When Allah has given us the opportunity, when we have the strength, when we have the wealth, whenever we have it, we should be spending it. Sabla ibn Masood radiyallahu anhu say, Dirhamun yunfiquhu ahadukum fi sihatihi. One dirham a person spend when he is in good health, afdal min mi'ati yusibiha inda al-maut is better than a hundred dirhams given when a person is in the throes of death or he has made a wasiyat and is written in his wall, one third I should give. So a person has an opportunity while he's alive to see the different organizations, institutes where he can donate and monitor it. So let us give our sadaqah while we are alive and not 
while a person is in a cover and he doesn't know what his inheritors will do. They say in the time of Isa alayhi salam, there was a person who was called Mal'oon because he was very stingy. So one time amongst the Hawareen of Isa alayhi salam came to him and asked him that, can you assist me for going out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, the person refused, then he felt guilty and he gave him a sword. That person returned and he met Isa alayhi salam and he made Allah's ibadat for 70 year, years. So Isa alayhi salam asked him, Min ayna jitta bi hadha saif? Where did you get the sword from? So he said, Malun gave it to me. Isa alayhi salam became elated through the siddhaqah. And uh, when Isa alayhi salam and the Sa'abid were passing by the house of Malun, he came out to see the face of Isa alayhi salam and the Sa'abid. And he started gazing at them. So when the Abid seen him looking at them, he said that I need to run away from this stingy person before he burns me from his fire from Jahannam because he's a stingy person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Isa alayhi salam and said, Wahi, قُلْ لِعَبْدِي هَذَا الْمُذْنِبِ أَنِّي قَدْ غَفَرْتُ لَهُ بِصَدَقَتِي بِالصَّيْفِ That tell your worshipper that I have forgiven this man because of the sadaqah of giving that one sword his whole life since I've made maghfirat and just the fact that you want to see your Mubarak face I've made his maghfirat tell that to that person and tell the abid also, innahu rafiq fi al-jannah that thus mal'oon will be your companion in jannah just through these two actions. So, sadaqah. Abdullah ibn Masur and say, in istata'ata an taj'ala kanza kaithu la yakulu sus if you can push your treasure and your wealth where insects and termites will not consume wa la tanaluhu lusus and the thieves will not achieve it and attain it fafali sadaqa then give sadaqa how baligi is arabic la yaakuluhu al-sus wa la tanaluhu al-lusus ajib so they say they have 10 benefits of giving sadaqa and be generous khamsun fi dunya wa khamsa fi al-akhira five in the dunya and five in akhira as for the five of dunya tatiru al-mal it will cleanse your wealth secondly tatiru al-banan min al-dhunub it will wipe out your sins Thirdly, دَفْءُ الْبَلَاءِ وَالْأَمْرَاضِ And it will remove any calamities and all sicknesses. Number four, it is a means of making a person who is in need happy and their du'as goes directly to the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number five, فِيهَا بَرَكَةٌ فِي الْمَالِ And it's a means of barakah in your wealth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الرَّازِقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the best of rewards and recompense. In Akhirah, it will be the shade when there will be heat on the day of Qiyamah. The scales will be made very heavy and person's adab and punishment if it is, it will be made light. A person will cross the pul sirat very swiftly and a person's darajat and stages will be increased in Akhirah. It is said about Abdul Malik inherited 50,000 dirham, 50, dirhams and he distributed all his inheritance. People were surprised and shocked. Ask him how could you distribute all your inheritance? He said, Kuntu as'alu li ikhwani al jannah wa kayfa abkhal alayhim bid dunya. I've been making dua for the ummah and for humanity for hidayat and goodness for Akhirat. Now that Allah has given me dunya, how can I be stingy with regards to dunya? I want them to benefit in dunya and akhirat. It is said about Hassan ibn Abi Sinan that once a lady came to him and he noticed فَإِذَا هِيَ إِمْرَأَ جَمِيلَ She was endowed with beauty. فَقَالِ يَا غُلَامْ So he told his assistant, أَعْطِهَا أَرْبَعْمِيَا Give her 400 dirhams. So the, shock, the servant was shocked and perplexed. He said, she's only asking for one dirham and you are giving her 400. That is, does not make sense 
to me فَقَالَ لَمَّا نَذَرْتُ إِلَى جَمَالِهَا When I seen her beauty خَشِيتُ أَن تُفْتَن I was afraid that she would fall into fitna this beauty will take her to the wrong path and she will go to the disobedience فَتَقَعْ فِي الْمَعْسِيَةِ فَأَحْبَبْتُ أَنْ أُغْنِيَهَا I decided I rather make her independent and wealthy and عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَرْغَبَ فِيهَا أَحَدٌ فَيَتَزَوَّجَهَا that somebody might incline to her and marry her and she will go the halal way so sometimes it is not just about giving sadaqah but we need to see the places we are giving we need to see the people we are giving and we need to see how much benefit it comes and benefits the ummah that's why it is a saying we make a living by what we get but we make a life by what we give we make a living by what we get but we make a life by what we give. So sadaqah, it cannot be overemphasized. He said about Hamid Laffaf, rahimallah, you say, Inni la minkum bi arba'a. I will be satisfied and comfortable if I see four qualities in you. Wa in kana salaf ala khilafi dhalika. Although the pious predecessors were contrary to that, that you give priority li takthiri al faridah that you want to do your faraid I am happy that you increase and you be particular about the faraid but the people of the path كانوا يهتمون لتكثير الفضيلة they were particular about the sunan and the nawafil and extra tajud you cannot even secure your faraid when they used to secure their nawafil secondly أن تخاف الله في ذنوبكم that you committed guna and you have a fear, Allah will not forgive you. كانوا يخافون ألا تقبل. They were worried that the amal were not accepted. You were worried that your toba is not accepted. Thirdly, تزهدوا في الحرام. You abstain from guna. كانوا يزهدون في الحلال. But they used to abstain from halal. What robbery? And the fourth. You people are giving preference to charity and good actions and your friends, they used to give charity and be good to their enemies. So these four things if you people are particular, I will be console and say, okay, it's fine. The zamana is like that. So we should always achieve and aim high. They say in the time of Isa alayhi salatu was salam, he passed by a village and there was people there that had a complaint they said inna hadha al-qassar thus bleacher this person that does the washing he shatters and he shreds our clothing wa yahbisuha sometimes we find it missing so there's a flaw here he doesn't do a good job of it and secondly some of our clothes get stolen make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah does not make him return what his pack his bundle means if he comes back he won't have the bundle and just make badwa against him so isa islam said allahumma la taruddahu bi rimzatihi ya allah make him not return fa dhahab al qassar so this person went to the mountain he had three pieces of bread on him and in the mountains when he was going to do his job jahu abi the worshiper came and he's, he used to make worship in that mountain. He made salam to him. He said, do you have anything to feed me? So the bleacher said that, uh, sure, no problem. And he gave him one piece. And he said, غفر الله لك ذنبك. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive your sins. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pahar qalbaka cleanse your heart so when he heard us he gave him the second piece and uh, when he received that he said ya qassar banna allahu laqa qassaran fil jannah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bal for you a palace in jannah and then he made this dua so he gave him his third piece and he said ghafar allahu laka ma taqaddama min dhanbika wa ma ta'akhar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all your sons previous and future. So when he returned, there was no harm to him and he came to the village and they complained. They said, this person has come. We said, make badwa, he has come, but there's nothing, no, no harm on him. 
So there, uh, Isa alayhi salam summoned that person and he said, you did something today that has protected you. And the people said, you've been doing this here, but Allah has protected you. He said, an Abid came, I gave him three pieces of my only food and he made three du'as. So Isa alayhi salam said, his dua has been accepted. And he said, bring that bundle at bail. When they opened the bail, فَإِذَا فِيَا حَيَّةٌ سَوْدَى مُلْجِمَةٌ بِلِجَامٍ حَدِيدٍ There were serpents, black serpents, that were tied up and were bound. So Isa alayhi salam asked and addressed these serpents, that did not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send you to take this person to task? They said, yes. وَلَكِنْ جَاءَهُ A beggar, a person in need, a pious person came to him, asked him for something, he gave it to him, on every piece, he made dua, his dua was accepted and وَمَلَكٌ قَائِمٌ يَقُولُ amin. There was an angel there that said, Amin. فَبَعَضْوَ اللَّهُ إِلَيَّ مَلَكًا مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Allah sent farishtas to me and they bound me up. They bound me up. So Isa alayhi salam addressed him and said, Ya Qassar, O person, O bleacher, Make Toba, Allah has accepted your du'as, start your life back to zero. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made your maghfirah. The amal for today is when a person goes to bed in a state of wudu and he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making dhikr until he falls asleep. Lam yanqalib sa'atan min al-layl. When he just wakes up and he's restless and he makes du'a, Yes Allah fiya khairan min al-dunya wal akhira ila atawwa iya. Allah will accept his dua. May Allah give us to make an amal wa akhir da'wana. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.